one of my favorite series, which is an underhook series, as fast as I can. I'll show you much, as many different uh, looks at this underhook series as I can before I leave. Um, so what we'll do is this. When you guys come in, we'll just stand up just like this. I'll show it quick. We'll go back out and we'll work on it. If I say freeze, we'll just go work on it. We'll try to stand up the whole time and keep things keep things rolling, right? I hate the whole sit down and maybe it's because I'm so ADHD, I'm half nuts, but I hate the whole sit down and teach thing. So we'll do that. Aaron's going to be my partner. The underhook series, why are we showing it? Well, I was an underhook guy in college and it really helped me out, especially my senior year, it helped me, helped me place at the national tournament. But more than that was when I went to Cornell University as a young assistant coach, I coached a guy by the name of Travis Lee. You guys ever heard of Travis Lee? He was a two-time national champion, four-time All-American. He actually won his first national title with the, the exact move I'm going to show second. Uh, with that exact move, he, he won the national title. So I learned a ton from him and actually grew in this in this area from there. And then worked with a guy named Keith Gavin, who's a world team member. He's one of my assistant coaches for two years and kind of took a bunch of stuff from him as well. So it's kind of evolved over the years. I love this system. It's high percentage and it's low risk. So why wouldn't you use it, right? First thing on the underhook is position on the underhook. All right, position on the underhook. I'm not gonna go into a bunch of elaborate setups. I'm gonna show you one, my favorite one because I more wanna be focused on the position on the hook and the, and the offense from the hook. I call my first setup a jab series. All right, so just like in, who, who here, no one watches boxing anymore, so I'll say MMA. Who watches MMA? You guys all do, I hope, right? Well, right, you see that George St. Pierre's got a great jab. You see people using the jab to set up everything. Oh, you didn't know I could do it like that. Set up everything else, okay? So I'm gonna use my jab in wrestle. I'm a right leg lead, so I jab left. Real simple question, why don't I jab right? Why don't I club with my right hand? Because of my lead leg, you guys are great. You guys all know that one. So I'm gonna club left arm, whoop, right here. First thing I'm gonna do is club and pull. See his arm come up? His right elbow, even just a little bit, that's all I need is a little opening. As I jab, I displace his head, watch my fingers grab, right there, he comes up. See how he came into me, I didn't go to him? When that arm comes up like this, I'm gonna level change, and that's when I drop my hook. So I jab, displace the head, watch my fingers go from long, to short. His head goes from way out here to close. As I do that, all I do is level change. Look at the position I'm in. Looks just like a stance, right? Then I pump my underhook in here like this. Here's the biggest thing I want to say on the underhook. I, it drives me crazy when guys leave their elbow down on an underhook like this. Exactly. I've had two guys have to get Tommy John surgery because they had their elbow like this. Now just fundamentally speaking, this is a terrible example, but it's my favorite one. Why in the world would I try to generate power with my arm like this when I can generate it like this? So if I had to defend myself, I'm not saying this has happened, but let's throw out this scenario for you guys. If I, if I hear at 2 o'clock in the morning, my cauliflower ear perks up, I hear somebody robbing my house at 2 a.m. and they're rolling out with the flat screen. You got the flat screen, go ahead, how? Yeah, you got the flat screen, I see you. I'm like, holy crap, he's taking the flat screen. I don't know what else you got. You may have a knife, you may have a gun. Guys, listen, this is serious. He's got the flat screen. I don't know what I'm going to do. Would I run up to hell at 2 a.m., right, like this, and go, in, 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 in. would I do that? Or would I go, Bruh! and throw a haymaker like that? Wouldn't I? I like, oh, My arm would be, I'd generate as much power as I can with that arm. It's the same thing with an underhook. I want to generate all the power I can through my legs, up my body, through my shoulder, through my neck, and into my elbow. Everything I've got into this underhook. So when I throw this jab, hook, I want to go right here. I want to split his spine, grab that scap, elbow up, shoulder shrug up. Because that's what's going to lead to the throw by. Just like you guys lifting weights, you do shoulder raises, shoulder raise up, shoulder shrug up. So right here, I'm shrugging and I'm elbow up as high as I can go because that's the way I'm going to crush Aaron when he tries to take the flat screen. All right? Everybody say flat screen, down three. One, two, three. Flat three. Three. Okay. Jab, hook, right here. We're catching right here, split in the back. I'm gonna grab the scalp. I'm not gonna grab the shoulder blade or the deep or shallow there. Right here, shoulder up, elbow up. Now here's the punch. I'm gonna step deep and I'm gonna throw a punch over my left ear. Woo. I'm just gonna step in, use my legs for power. My arm's the finisher. The elbow up part's the finish, but my legs generate the power. I step deep. This time I stepped outside. Watch the punch over my left ear. Now when I attack, I attack as high as I can on the thigh, because if I go too low and he kicks out, I lose. So as I jab, hook, the underhook position's great. I step in this time, I step in left foot, or my right, left ear, I got the same way. So jab, hook, remember, elbow up, shoulder shrug up, step in deep, throw it over your left ear, get him moving, attack high on the thigh. One, two, three. 